Hi, I'm Dr. John Argalaska, Professor John Argalaska, biofeedback, neurofeedback clinician, and also hypnotherapist. I'm producing this short video to address uh, anxiety and insecurity with the hope that some information about how our nervous system works will be uh, will facilitate uh, anyone uh, having difficulty with those things, anxiety and insecurity, will facilitate them having a better subjective life experience. Uh, I've titled this, uh, Dr. John Presents Your Nervous System. Certainly, it will be a rather cursory overview of our nervous system, but uh, perhaps some of the information will be able to get you moving in a positive direction. That's my hope. So uh, as it says there, uh, it's dedicated to helping you overcome anxiety and insecurity. It's designed to get you out on the dance floor, reignite your spark, and get you moving on whatever you've been held back from. In short, to uh, get a, a better subjective life experience, uh, if that is an area that you want uh, to improve. Uh, sometimes we find ourselves wanting to run and hide when other people notice us. This is not an uncommon kind of uh, an experience for people who have insecure attachment. I emerged from childhood with insecure attachment. My mother never picked me up out of the crib. She was afraid she would be teaching me how to cry. She told me when I was about 40 years old that, uh, you know, your cousin Jocelyn, uh, she picks the kids up when they cry. Uh, and maybe her way is better than uh, what I did with you and your brothers. I never picked you guys up out of the crib. Uh, and this uh, told me when she said this, it uh, made me realize why I was such a needy child and why I needed attention so much, especially from women. And then when I got it, I would uh, uh, actually refuse it because I didn't feel myself worthy of it. I call it a fire and ice personality, very uncomfortable way to be. Now, <clears throat> uh, it's important to know that I'm not blaming my mother for this. This is just a matter of fact. My mother was a very good person. She raised me the way that she was raised. And uh, that's normally what happens with what's called attachment style. It tends to be transgenerational. Uh, parents pass on the, gen the uh, attachment style that they learned uh, to their children. And uh, it's, it's it manifested sometimes in not being able to take a compliment, um, which certainly was characteristic of myself. Very uncomfortable way to be. Um, sometimes uh, harmless things can appear to be life-threatening. Uh, and this is the case when what is considered to be our nurture uh, from significant others. Strangers don't have the impact on us that significant others do. Um, if we feel that our a significant other is going to withdraw and nurture, it really affects us in a, in a very significant way. It, it uh, For children, the removal of nurture is the most uh, devastating uh, thing that can, can happen. So sometimes uh, things that uh, our significant others say or do uh, innocently uh, will have an impact that makes us feel like our nurture is going to be removed. Um, and this is why uh, sometimes innocent comments can be a subconscious reminder of something that happened between ourselves and our parents that 
that uh, we uh, remember and our nervous system remembers, and it causes an avalanche of bad feelings. The worst thing for a child is fear of loss of nurture. Um, and uh, this is also very frightening for us in relationship with our significant other. If we feel that they are threatening to remove the nurture that they give us, um, it's, uh, it, can, it can be very, very devastating. Um, uh, there is a, a short video, and I'll have a link to it, uh, by Ed Tronic called The Still Face Paradigm that demonstrates the power of maternal gaze and the relationship between an infant and a caregiver is parallel to the relationship between ourselves and our significant others, between ourselves also and our therapist. Uh, so you might want to watch that when... Uh, when this video is over, get an idea of the impact of maternal gaze. So uh, what has happened is some of us emerge from childhood with a faulty set of expectations about how relationships would work out. That's what's called attachment style. Um, our parents, like all people, are less than perfect. About half of us developed what is referred to as an insecure attachment. Uh, it's important to recognize, as I said earlier, this is not about blame. Attachment style tends to be transgenerational. It's passed on from generation to generation until someone breaks the chain. Uh, this video may give you uh, an indication of what it takes to break that chain we learn through implicit messages. Uh, this dance between an infant and a caregiver can be viewed on many levels. Uh, the dance between the infant and caregiver mirrors the dance between lovers, at best reflecting uh, mutual vulner vulnerability and uh, what are called Rogers core conditions, which I'll present in just a moment. Uh, these ideas, these expectations, we learn before we even had any speech. So there's no narrative memory uh, to the formation of, uh, of these ideas that are part of our personality. It's called our attachment style. So now, very significant is just as we were vulnerable to those who supplied our nurture, mostly to our mother, uh, we can learn a new set of expectations to supplant the prob problematic ones in a relationship with a trusted other to whom we can allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Uh, it, it takes a while for these implicit messages to stick and become part of our psyche. But just as they entered implicitly uh, without speech, it's what was behind the actions of the caregiver that formed these expectations. These ideas uh, can be supplanted uh, implicitly. Now, uh, this idea is not rocket science. Carl Rogers, as father of humanistic existence, existential psychology, along with Abraham Maslow and Rollo May, gave us a plan uh, uh, on how to do this in therapy, and it works the same way in significant relationships. We need a trusted other to whom we can allow vulnerability. And Rogers believed that we all had within us an internal force for growth that under the right conditions come to the fore and allow us to solve our own problems. 
uh, those core conditions were empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard. Uh, and uh, when those conditions were extant in a relationship, one would feel safe enough to activate their own internal force for growth. And while I've mentioned safety, I will be presenting another video about polyvagal theory, which is called by the author of polyvagal theory, Stephen Porges, The Science of Safety. And uh, it complements these ideas of Carl Rogers very, uh, very well. Um, empathy is, of course, the ability to place yourself in someone else's position and try and experience what they are feeling. Congruence is being real in the relationship. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be blunt and cruel, but it does mean that you have to be genuine, uh, genuine in what you present to your uh, significant other. An unconditional positive regard means that you have to accept or validate. It doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that your partner, uh, your significant other says or does or the ideas that they have, but you have to recognize that they are uniquely their own and uh, you validate them as their own ideas. Empathy, congruence, unconditional positive regard uh, in a relationship in which there is mutual vulnerability uh, activates a force for growth from within, according to Carl Rogers. So if you have insecure attachment, uh, you might benefit from a trusted other uh, everyone needs a trusted other who can bring Roger's core conditions to life. Doesn't need to be a therapist. Uh, you could do it for each other. And I'd be honored to show you how to do this. So uh, here are a few points that I've brought up. And as I said, this is going to be a very short uh, cursory overview of a part of our nervous system. It's that part of our nervous system that we call our attachment style. About 50% of us, according to research, emerge from childhood with a faulty set of expectations or how relationships would unfold. This is based upon how our caregiver related to us. Uh, if your caregiver was attentive and what uh, 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 is referred to as good enough, you emerge with the idea that social relationships will work out okay. But if your caregiver was absent uh, or neglectful or even worse, abusive, then you come away, you emerge from childhood with a set of expectations that social relationships will mirror that relationship with your caregiver. Very important to know this is not about blame. Okay, it's rather a recognition of the need for nurture to build a better set of relationships. Um, uh, it's it, Things may have been icky. They may have not been nearly ideal uh, in the relationship with your caregiver. But as we mature, hopefully we are able to look back on that and say, yes, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't good. It caused me discomfort. But I understand that my mother, my caregiver, whoever that might have been, had their own set of expectations to deal with. They had their own circumstances that caused them to relate to us in the way that they did. Attachment style 
<clears throat> tends to be transgenerational. It goes from one generation to another until someone breaks the chain. And hopefully these ideas that I'm giving you now will give you an inkling about how one goes about breaking the chain and inculcating in one's own children a set of expectations that result in security. Carl Rogers proposed some core conditions to activate uh, personal growth within a relationship. Those were uh, empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard. Now, <clears throat> this path that uh, is to what is called earned security, that's security that is achieved post-childhood. It's referred to as earned security. Um, is uh, it takes time. Each time you allow yourself to be vulnerable to your significant other and your significant other validates you for who you are. And you can do this for each other, okay? Validates you for who you are, puts a penny in the bank towards a new set of expectations that things will work out okay. It takes time, but it's worth the effort. Now, I can set you on the path to do this. I've been down this road, and uh, this short video outlined the outlined the pilgrimage, pilgrimage, which could be an important part of your individual journey through life. Perhaps this is enough to set you out. If you need more or would honor me to be your trusted other, I'm here to assist with psychoeducation, information about your nervous system, okay, neurofeedback, biofeedback, and hypnosis in my alternative and holistic practice. Um, you know, uh, these uh, ideas that were inculcated in childhood through uh, implicit learning. It's what's behind what the caregiver did that created the set of expectations can be supplanted with implicit learning as well in a relationship with a significant other with congruence, empathy, unconditional positive regard. When one can allow oneself to be vulnerable and a person responds with Roger's core conditions, it's a penny in the bank towards a new set of expectations that will be more effective for you. Um, uh, this is a, a presentation that I did uh, at uh, the uh, Ojai Land Conservancy's Mountain Film Festival uh, that uh, shows my practice there. I'm an avid skier. Um, I am sticking my tongue out right there. Um, um, I can see people face to face with uh, neurofeedback, biofeedback, hypnosis, and uh, I've also developed some facility with online work, either by Zoom or on the phone alone, and uh, I can assist you uh, in those modalities. Now, I had mentioned before uh, of a short video uh, by Ed Tronic uh, that's called The Still Face Paradigm, which demonstrates the power of maternal gaze, which you might want to look at. Uh, and uh, it has a happy ending, by the way. It's it's very short. And if you uh, suspect that you might have uh, a set of expectations about how social relationships work out that isn't serving you well, here are a couple of um, quizzes that you can take online. They're free to take. Uh, some of them, one of them offers a more extensive report for a fee, but you don't have to do that. Um, if you would like to uh, take one of those, and uh, if you, it, if it's confirmed that uh, the results of this do indicate that you have an insecure attachment, or if you know that already, you uh, and if you would like some assistance, uh, I am available to help. 
Okay. Um, so again, uh, this has been presented with the idea that some knowledge of how you received or how an attachment style was inculcated uh, in your psyche before you could even speak. Um, uh, this uh, information, I hope, will help uh, set you on a path that uh, can get you moving towards getting earned security. It is one aspect of overcoming insecurity and anxiety uh, that I hope this video will help you with. So uh, give me a call if you think that I might be able to be of service to you. I, at very minimum, hope that some of the ideas here will help you in relationship with your significant other, mutual vulnerability um, with activating Carl Rogers' core conditions of empathy and congruence and unconditional positive regard can help move you towards uh, the path of achieving insecurity. Okay, take care.